welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore and today we are going to start uh, object oriented futures. Yesterday we have discussed uh, one concept that is what object oriented programming. Okay? Now we are going to start object oriented futures. What are the futures available in OOPS concept means OOP. OOP stands for object oriented programming. Now, in OOP concept, uh, the first main thing is a class, later second one is nothing but object, next data hiding, next encapsulation, next inheritance, polymorphism, message communications. Like this, uh, the OOPs features are, we are having several, okay? we are having several OOPs features, what they are. One is nothing but a class. Now, I am going to start what is a class and later we are going to discuss about a object, later what is called data hiding, what is called an encapsulation everything. Now we are going to start first uh, the whoops feature that is nothing but class. Now what is a class? Simply class is the extension of C structure. Okay. Then that means, uh, we have to discuss about C structure little bit. Generally in C language, generally in C language structure means a collection of heterogeneous variables. That means a structure allows to store different types of uh, variables at one place under one name. Okay? Okay. That is why it is very easy to construct uh, object oriented programming. Okay. That is why generally structures are the foundations for, okay. structures are the foundations for object oriented concepts. That means, here in object oriented programming, we are going to use the class, but that class is derived from, means uh, class is the extension of a C structure. That is why first I am going to discuss about the C structure, later we are going to start the class concept. Now, structure means what? It is collection of heterogeneous variables. Okay. Otherwise, in other terms, a structure is a user defined data type. And why it is called user defined data types? Because of there is a cause. Generally, in C language, we are going to use some primitive data types as well as we are going to use some derived data types. For example, primitive data types means integers, float character. Now, derived data type means arrays, pointers and functions. Now, we are able to declare both the primitive and derived data type at one place using the structure concept. For example, I want to store some student data means I want to store one particular student data. Now, generally every student contains what? ID number, name, subject wise marks. Generally, I have to declare like this. Suppose, INT ID. Just assume it is nothing but the main function. Now, it is a main function and the main function contains student ID. Next, student name. Next, every student is having subject wise marks. Okay. For example, one student is having six subjects. Now, I have to declare what six subjects. Suppose, S1, S2 and S6. Here, I have to declare six variables for six subjects. Okay. Instead of this, can I declare array? Yes, it is alone. No? Now, in place of uh, normal variables, I am going to use uh, array. Okay. Now, here I can declare employee details everybody that means uh, they are non related data that means this program allows to store non related data, but I want to make it uh, related that means I want to store only the student data at one place. Okay. Then in place of main function I am going to start a structure, suppose structure name is student. Now, see this, it is the student structure 
and the student structure contains first thing is id id is of integer type and s6 actually we are calling array okay here id is a normal variable and s is a array type variable now here the point is id is a primitive data type and array is a derived data type now we are able to store both the primitive and derived data type under one name called structure okay that means the total structure is constructed by the user based on the requirement that's why structure is called it is a user defined data type that's why structure is called it is a user defined data type next a structure is also called complex data type because of different types of variables are stored under one name at one place okay and due to this advantage is what we can maintain object oriented data means what for example here it is the struct keyword that denotes what we are going to start a structure structure name and structure members they are called and here to work with this structure i am going to declare some variables like this suppose s10 now what happens here s1 s2 s10 are called structure variables generally variables are stored in stack that's why here just assume it is the stack now it is the stack and first structure variable s1 now this s1 require how many bytes okay here id is the integer that's why it takes two bytes and here s6 is a six integers that's why it require 12 bytes now i am going to reduce this now 3 s of 3 now what happened id requires two bytes s of 3 six bytes and name 20 that's why memory is allocated like this now it is a s1 first two bytes are allocated for id now two bytes and later s of 3 is there now what happens watch it here structure name is what structure variable name s1 and array name is s now s and three integers memory allocated that means total six bytes memory allocated and base address passed to s and now later name also there no now it is the name and it requires total 20 bytes that's why total this structure size is 28 bytes now the compiler is indicating 28 bytes required for this structure okay like this the memory is allocated for structure variables now to access these members we are using s1.id s1.name s1.subjects okay it is the common thing and now structure allows to store the data like this suppose it is s1 structure data means uh, here we are able to store one student data one student marks one student name that means all they are related to one student here that one student is called one object next s2 also same that s2 allows to store second student data s3 s4 like this now it is called a object oriented that's why structures are the foundation now what is the problem with the structure okay now we are going to discuss what is the disadvantage in structure now the problem is in c language in c language the structure data is uh, by default public it is a main problem that means what okay now the structure data is accessible from anywhere in our program through the structure variables that means outside members other members or member functions or functions anybody can access the structure data that's why structure data is not uh, protected because of structure data is public by default structure members are public okay now to avoid this problem they have introduced the concept of a class 
and one more thing is in C++ also we are having structures ok. Here the point is actually we have discussed about C language structure and actually our topic is what C++. Now we are having structures in C++ also now what is the difference ok. In C language inside the structure we are able to declare only the variables which are called structure members. In C language inside the structure we are able to declare only the structure members means uh, only the variables only. But uh, in C++ in C++ structure we can declare structure members and uh, member functions also it is the major difference ok. Now we are able to declare data members generally called data members ok which are also called structure members and now C++ structure allows to declare both to the variables and functions inside the structure but C structure never allows this kind of declaration. It is the only difference between C structure and C++ structure but here one point we have to discuss that is what in C++ also the structure data is uh, public that means anybody can access from anywhere that is why structure data is not secure that is why to avoid this problem ok they have introduced a class concept in C++. Now in C++ how the data is secured that is why they have designed the class like this the class data is divided into private protected public members in C there is no private public protected only public is there and in C++ structure also we are having private protected public. But uh, here one important thing is there what is that thing ok here in C++ structure ok we are not able to de define complex programs with the C++ structures we are not able to design complex programs means big project works but it is possible with the class concept because of classes allows the concept of inheritance ok. First observe it carefully here one point is there structure is available in C language and all the structure members are public by default in C language and C structure allows only the variables inside the structure which are called structure members ok and now it is not protected structure data is not protected. Now in C++ what happened in C++ also they are using structures but the only one difference is ok here they have introduced member functions they have introduced member functions with the private public protected declarations. But the problem with the C++ structure is they are not able to use for designing the big applications here big application means project works it is the major problem and here also problem is data is public everybody can access that is why to avoid this problem in C++ which concept is introduced class. Now what is a class? Class also extension of C structure now according to this explanation class is the extension of C structure. Now the difference is what? In C++ there is a rule what it is means uh, the private data of a class should be accessed with the member functions of same class it is the main thing. In previous discussion what happens structure data is structure data is accessed by ok structure members and outers also in C++ structure the structure data is accessed by structure members outers in C structure also the data is accessed by outers that is why C and C++ structure data is not secured that is why they have introduced one formula what it is ok in C++ the private data should be accessed only with the member functions of same class 
now what is called member functions ok. Here the functions that are declared inside the class are called member functions that means outers are not allowed ok. Certain rules and these regulations are there that means certain limitations are also there what it is friend function pointers by using friend functions and pointers we can access the class data also. But actually the rule is what means the private data should have to access with member functions of same class ok. That is why they have designed class. Now how the class is working see this suppose it is the class suppose student class it is. Now inside the student class I am going to use either private or public or protected. Later I am going to declare the data members and member functions. Now class and semicolon see this here it is looking to be the C++ structure now both are having same but the only difference is here private public protected declared no? and data members member function declared no? here also we can but the major difference is they are used in inheritance concept means class allows the concept of uh, inheritance but uh, structure never allows the concept of inheritance and now what happens is based on this I am going to give one small example. Suppose there is a class called STU and here I am not going to mention private or public automatically all the members will become private and here in C++ structure by default all the members are public. It is the another important difference between structure and class that is why by default structure data is public by default class data is private. Now when it is private what happens suppose private I am going to de declare like this now it is called visibility label or access specifier later int id next character name of 20 next in this section I am going to write one function public or private what it may be then suppose public void get. Now inside this function I can access the id and name using c out and c in or directly what it may be. Here id and name are declared inside the class under private and get is declared in public section and inside the get we are accessing id and name ok. Here I am going to access the id and name that means here where we are accessing the data members that is inside the member function here get is called member function why because it is right now member of this class that is why the functions that are declared inside a class are called member functions and with the help of member functions only we can access the private data of a class that means uh, now this data is uh, not accessible from outside the class which is called data hiding which is called data hiding ok. Next it is available to only the member functions and this concept is called data hiding that is why the key factor of data hiding is achieved with the private declarations when the members are private they can be accessed with the member functions ok. I am giving small example generally we are using mobile phones. Now suppose one mobile phone is there right now it is placed in my pocket and uh, who is going to use this one me and my family members ok and here there is no permission required because of they are my family members my members and when it is placed on the road when it is placed outside now it is able to access by any person because of now it is called public ok. When it is inside the pocket it is private member that is why private means restricted only authorized people can access when it is on the road means public 
anybody can access. Now, the structured data is uh, public and class data is uh, private. That means, authors are not able to access without permission. That is why user is able to design secured applications using C++ class concept. Okay? That is why class allows to declare Okay, class allows to declare both the variables and functions at one place. Now, the variables are called data members and functions are called member function. That is why here what is happening? The data and functions both are associated. Okay, and now according to this explanation, class is the combination of data members and member functions. That is why simply class is a collection of members. That is why here the main point is, main point is class is collection of members. What kind of members? Data members and member functions. Now, both are associated together okay, into a single unit called class which is called encapsulation. That is why encapsulation is the process of binding the data and associated functions together into a single unit called class. This one is possible with the class. That is why class provides the major concept of data bind hiding. Data hiding means insulating the data from external access, means outers are not allowed, only members can access. It is called data hiding. Second one, encapsulation means binding of or tidying the data members and member functions into a single unit called class. It is nothing but a encapsulation feature. Both are provided with a class concept. That is why here class is a user defined data type with the complex data. Okay? Here class is a user defined data type or it is the extension of C structure. Next, here from class we have to declare the variables. For example, here structure is there. Now, to access the structure members, we should have to declare the structure variables. We should have to declare the structure variables. Then only the memory is allocated in stack. Similar to that, in class also, in class also to access the data members, first memory have to be allocated. And when it is allocated means when the objects are created. Now, what is called object? Here, we are calling they are structure variables. Here, they are called class variables. Here, called class variables and the class variables are called objects. That is why object meaning is what? It is a variable of type class. For example, I am going to declare like this void main. Now, stus. Here, s is called object. Now, it is nothing but a variable of type class. That is why object meaning is class variables. Now, the memory also allocated for S means now S is having data members. No? For data members, the memory is allocated. That is why to access the class members, we have to declare the objects. Later, to access the object members, see this, I am going to access like this. For example, S dot get. Now, it is called calling, it is called call. That is why to call or to access the class data members or functions, we should have to use the object name. Now, here this object is created from this class. That is why class is a blueprint, class is a blueprint to construct the objects. Okay? That is already said class is a user defined data. Now, I am saying class is a blueprint. Here blueprint means what? Original copy. Blueprint means original copy to construct the Xerox copies. Xerox means what? Instances. Now, instances means what? Copies. Now, the copies are nothing but uh, objects. That is why to create the objects, we need the class. That is why class is a blueprint and object is the instance of a class. That is why another definition. Already we have discussed what? Object is a class variable. 
Now, I am saying object is the instance of a class and another definition ok class ok. Here one small point is there already have given two explanations about object and the next explanation is object is the physical representation of a class object is the physical representation of a class that means what ok. Here I said class is the blueprint means original copy and objects are the xerox ok. Here the point is when the object is created then only memory allocated that means according to this example class never takes the memory means when class is created memory not allocated when objects are created then only memory allocated means uh, which requires the memory means uh, object that is why object is the physical and class is the logical ok. It is a major point now it is nothing but what is a class what is an object ok. In next session I am going to cover the remaining whoops features thank you for watching. Thank you.